You know, as we think about heaven, one of the questions that comes up all the time is the question about marriage. Will there be marriage in heaven? Will we be married to the people we're married to on earth? What will that be like? One of the places that Scripture seems to give answer to this is in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22. And to set the stage, you need to understand that what's happening here, Jesus is being questioned by the Sadducees. The Sadducees are trying to trap Jesus. You see, they don't believe in the resurrection. They don't believe that there's any possibility of resurrection. And so they're trying to trap Jesus with this question about resurrection so that he'll realize the folly of his theology and teaching on the resurrection. But you and I know something about that. The resurrection is at the heart and center of the Christian gospel. And so the Sadducees posed this question. Teacher, they said, Moses told us that if a man dies without having children, his brother must marry the widow and have children for him. Now, there were seven brothers among us. The first one married and died, and since he did not, had no children, he left his wife to his brother. The same thing happened to the second and the third brother, right on down to the seventh. Finally, the woman died. Now then, at the resurrection, whose wife will she be of the seven, since all of them were married to her? And you know what's interesting about this question? The Sadducees are trying to trip trip up Jesus, but the reality is what they've done is they've pointed out there are some problems with this whole issue of marriage. Because just like our bodies and just like our minds, marriage has been tainted by sin. Sometimes that sin results in divorce. Sometimes that sin results in bodies that die, that people are separated by death. But the reality is that the stain of sin has impacted marriage. That wonderful gift that God created in Genesis chapter 2 has been devastated by Genesis chapter 3. So what does that mean? Well, Jesus says to the Sadducees, You are in error because you do not know the Scriptures and you do not know the power of God. But then he says this, at the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. Now I have to tell you something. We have labored over this question. Pastor Zach and myself, Pastor Nordley, Pastor Kruger, we have labored over this question. We have devoted all kinds of time and effort to reading every commentary and trying to work through the scriptures, trying to understand what's intended and what's happening. Pastor Zach even got out this this whole diagram, you know, working the whole thing through for us. And I will tell you honestly, brothers and sisters, I have some questions about what what it's trying to tell us. I don't believe that what Scripture is saying, what Jesus is saying here, is definitive to understanding whether or not there will be marriage in heaven. And so what I have to admit to you is I don't know. I don't know how marriage will look in heaven. I know it will be different. I know there will be changes. I know that we're not going to have some kind of a crazy, chaotic circumstance And I know that if there is marriage in heaven, that it will resemble, it will be similar to what's going on in Genesis chapter 2. That perfect relationship, that perfect union. But dear friends, I don't think Scripture is definitive on this. But here's what I do know. I do know that every need that we have that is met in marriage will be met beyond anything we can imagine in heaven. I know that what God has prepared for us in eternity isn't going to be lacking in any way, shape, or form. I know that in heaven we will have family relationships, and I know that we will know the people who have been a part of our lives who are there with us in heaven. So I know that we will know who our spouse is. I know that there will be intimacy and fellowship and connectedness, but as to whether or not we will be married or live in the same domicile with them, I don't know. You know, I was talking to a lady about this. 
she was asking some of these same questions. And I was giving her the same very unsatisfying answer. And she said to me, well, you know the way I look at this? If God prepared this place for me, I know that even though I may not know exactly what it's going to be like, I know it's going to be amazing. And I thought to myself, that's the pattern. That's the very pattern of trust that Paul was talking about. And that goes along with our memory verse for this series that we read a few minutes ago. Can we put it back up there, 1 Corinthians? Read it with me. No eye has seen, no Do you trust that verse? Not a trick question. Do you trust that verse? And do you believe it? Then, dear brothers and sisters, when it comes to these places in Scripture, and there are others where we don't know, we need to trust that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for you. But we know it will be amazing. We know it will be awesome.